Hi viewers, this is Mohamed Idris and you are watching my YouTube channel. Uh, dear viewers, uh, today I came with a very interesting phenomena and that is what is game theory in international politics. Uh, now let's start it. Uh, basically this game theory was developed by Thomas Schelling. Uh, he described foreign policy making as a purely rational and mechanical action. Uh, international politics can be understood as a game. Uh, it is a game of strategy. The players are playing the game for winning. In international politics, we see either a two-person game or n person game. Uh, we also see uh, uh, zero-sum games and non-zero-sum games. Uh, Basically, this game theory helps in understanding foreign policies, especially uh, predictions. Uh, the two prominent games utilized by scholars in international politics include the chicken game uh, and the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, now let's talk about these two games one by one. Uh, basically, the chicken game concept is utilized to predict the course of action which a nation will take in a situation of a, a head-on collision. Uh, in case uh, uh, two countries reach a situation of a head-on collision, the rational action is not to think about prestige, uh, but to minimize the loss. The side uh, uh, which backtracks uh, first uh, uh, is treated as uh, chicken-hearted. Uh, basically, this game has been uh, useful to predict uh, the course of action between the USA, United States of America, and the uh, USSR, uh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, uh, in the 1962 uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, after World War II, uh, uh, the era of Cold War started, uh, USS, USA and USSR, uh, the two superpowers at their time, uh, on the one side the capitalist bloc and on the other side uh, the communist bloc. Actually, uh, these two blocks uh, had uh, uh, ideological differences. Uh, the USA feared the spread of communism by the uh, Soviet Union. Basically, uh, the US, the US, uh, uh, the America followed the uh, policy of uh, Monroe Doctrine, uh, according to which it opposed European colonization in North and South America. Uh, uh, US also uh, 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 gave uh, more significance uh, to US interests uh, or the people of the region. Uh, when political forces emerged to challenge uh, a U.S. dominion, then invasion and cops happened. Uh, this kind of intervention, intervention uh, uh, fueled uh, Cuba's suspicion of U.S. motives. Uh, apart from Cuba, the rest of Latin America came under U.S. Uh, dominion throughout the 20th century. Uh, Due to this, the relation between the U.S. and the Cuba snapped when uh, Fidel Castro seized power in Cuba in 1959 uh, to establish a communist state. Uh, by siding with the USSR, uh, Cuba directly got involved in the Cold War. Uh, in 1961, the United States broke off its diplomatic relation with Cuba. Uh, in 1961, uh, to depose uh, Fidel Castro, the USA planned uh, the Bay of Pigs invasion uh, in Cuba uh, to depose Fidel Castro, but the operation failed. Uh, uh, in consequence, uh, the fight, Fidel Castro asked for the Soviet Union for help, uh, to which USSR decided to set up a nuclear missile in Cuba aiming at USA. Uh, Moreover, uh, the USA had already created uh, missile uh, bases in Turkey, uh, close to the Soviet Union. Uh, the situation allowed the Soviet Union to create a missile base near the USA. That's why uh, Soviet Union created a, a missile base in Cuba uh, to aim uh, USA. Uh, 
the nations due to this uh, the nations were on the brink of a nuclear war the cuban crisis lasted for 13 days uh, in the end the soviet union agreed to remove missiles from cuba in turn uh, the usa pulled out uh, its missiles from western europe uh, and turkey uh, positioned towards the uh, soviet union Uh, as per chicken game theory, USSR, Una- Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, and the USA were in a head-on collision. The best possible solution is when one side backtracks to minimize loss. Here, USSR removed its uh, uh, missiles first. Uh, it is said that uh, uh, the USA won by forcing the Soviet Union to withdraw its missiles. Now let's talk about uh, the prisoner's dilemma. Uh, in this concept, uh, uh, two prisoners are, are accused of a crime. Uh, the theory assumes both the prisoners are rational and work with self-interest. But what one of them is involved with a more serious offense. Uh, the first uh, uh, a prisoner is offered a deal. Uh, let's suppose say prisoner two. If prisoner 2 testifies against prisoner 1 and prisoner 1 does not testify against prisoner 2 uh, the outcome is uh, that prisoner 2 is not punished but prisoner 1 prisoner 1 is offered uh, uh, the same deal in which the uh, prisoner 2 uh, will punished but prisoner 1 will not punished uh, if none of them testifies each prisoner will get a minimum a minimum sentence of 1 year uh, if both testify they will get a sentence of 3 years uh, their best interest is that both should not testify as it will result in 2 years of total jail time uh, but from uh, an individual's perspective uh, if prisoner b does not testify uh, uh, then uh, in cons- in consequence uh, he will uh, have eight or one year of jail but if prisoner b uh, testifies uh, then he will have uh, a three or zero, zero years of jail uh, basically this testifying uh, seems an extra appealing option uh, uh, this uh, uh, think uh, means the same thing goes for prisoner a as well if he te- if p- prisoner a t- does not testify he will have eight or one year of jail if prisoner a testifies then he will have uh, three years or zero zero years of jail basically the game uh, uh, therefore uh, predicts that uh, both these uh, rational self interested people will end up testifying and receiving 3 years of sentence each but not in the case of uh, ideal outcome uh, it is uh, uh, very much closer to the concept of security dilemma uh, in international politics uh, 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 the nations uh, are like prisoners in such a situation uh, they lack complete information about uh, the other uh, they are unable to trust the other country uh, hence they opt for the course of action uh, that is not most beneficial but avoids the worst possible outcome uh, in international international politics uh, uh, is in a such a situation uh, the defection rather than cooperation seems to be a better option so this concept means the prisoner dilemma is utilized uh, to predict whether uh, uh, india and pakistan uh, would go for acquiring uh, nuclear weapons or not uh, basically these two countries uh, uh, suffer from a huge trust deficit they lack any reliable source of information about whether another country will build nuclear weapons or not uh, the, there can be uh, different scenarios in scenario 1 uh, since both countries suffer from poverty and lack of resources as we know uh, it is better for them if both countries do not go for nuclear weapons 
uh, this situation will be a win to win situation if both cooperate but in case of scenario 2 uh, however it is difficult for them to trust each other so even if india assures pakistan pakistan will not trust it uh, the worst case uh, scenario of trust is when one country makes nuclear weapons and the others do not. It means completely losing out to the country which has nuclear weapons. So therefore both will make nuclear weapons. Uh, sometimes uh, we also use tools uh, to understand the strategic political uh, situation. So this was uh, that was all about the uh, uh, game theory in politics. So if you are uh, interested uh, to understand foreign policy, especially uh, about predictions, then this theory will help you uh, a lot uh, while predicting about and uh, 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 about a phenomena, about a, a, a policy, about a foreign policy, about two countries are uh, uh, many countries uh, then this will help you a lot to understand uh, their uh, situations hi viewers